The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. This is Raven Chain from Sister Kill Cycle, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. As always, I am bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Raven Chain, vocalist of Sister Kill Cycle. Sister Kill Cycle is a metal goth industrial band and hails from Tampa, Florida. And they have released their single, Blood Pact, a video. Also, this is the first single off their upcoming album, Cross My Heart. And Cross My Heart is the follow-up to 2010's album, Redemption Through Rebellion. And I hope I got all that correct. If not, Raven will... Come through the pits of hell and kill me. So anyway, <laughs> how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good, brother. You, you you got it all pretty spot on. Awesome, awesome. Like I was telling you, I really dig the horror realm of this band. I like the darkness around this band. I like bands who aren't scared and are chicken shit to go out of that box and to create their own style of music. So kudos to you guys on this. I uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, it's just something that I've, I've always felt needed to be done in, uh, in music. Uh, you know, so many bands are out there and they look like your next door neighbor, you know, they're wearing blue jeans and tennis shoes. And I mean, that's fine if you're comfortable, but I love the movies. I love theater, anything like that. And I love adding that element to the music side of things and giving uh, my audience, you know, something more to, to see, as well as listen to. Yeah, you. It's kind of like throwing throwing back to the Alice Cooper days of that shock rock. When you come out to see you, it, it's it's going to have that uh, theatrical attributes to it. Just like Ghost. Look at Ghost. I mean, they're brilliant with all this shit. Very much so. And uh, actually, it's one of the the modern bands I do respect. Uh, I like that they're coming out, and uh, you know they have a lot of imagery going on, and they're not afraid to play a style of music that typically would be reserved for more European style, uh, speed metal or, or, or death metal bands. How's it been working with curtain call records so far, Raven? No, oh, it's, it's great. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of them. Uh, they're, they're really kicking ass right now. As soon as we signed a contract with them, things started going. We, uh, as, as far as I know, uh, I think we got a call last night saying we got a, an actual PR person working now. But up to this point, just from what the, they've been doing with Rock Rage Radio, our video for Blood Pack is uh, over 800 plays in three days. And uh, wow. I thought that was pretty impressive. That's pretty damn good. Really good, actually. I yeah. Do, I do a lot of stuff for Curtain Call Records. I do a lot of stuff for Tag Publicity. And I like what these firms are doing for independent bands and bands who want second chances and things like that because let's face it man you know this well as i do it's very hard right now for any band to get a foot in that door so to speak oh it definitely is and coming from this side of the realm uh, you're looking at a world where people all but say the music industry is dead and it pretty much is unless you're one of these top selling artists who can actually bring people out to, uh, you know, a stadium or a coliseum, you know, for, for them to dig their claws in the, the business side of things and offer bands like us to get on a label and be able to do a worldwide release and, uh, you know, basically do the same thing that any other label would do with money. Now, you guys have released your new single, Video Blood Pact. Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs on this album? Which one would be the first single in video? Or also, what did you want that first song or video to say for Sister Kill Cycle when somebody saw it and listened to it? Basically, I took the whole last year and 
ended up writing the record myself. Uh, a lot of stuff was going on with the band. I had several members leave the band and uh, other members had family issues going on. They had to take care of. So I basically locked myself in, in my studio here at home and started writing this record. I knew through the writing process when, uh, when blood packs started coming together that it was going to be a song. It was probably going to be one of my favorite songs off the record. And through its development, I started getting a vision for the video. Um, I've kind of had the, the idea for the video for a while, but no song really matched what I saw in my head until this one came. And uh, I sat down and talked with uh, Thomas Crane, who's the director, and he and I bounced things back and forth and basically wrote the script together. And it, it just, it, it was like it was meant to happen. The, the song, I just knew that that song was going to be the first video. How was working with Thomas on this? Now, I've got to see the video, folks. I'm telling you, get out and check this video out if you like horror stuff and things like that. But not just that, but I mean, the song itself is pretty badass. How was working with him on this, Raven? Uh, Thomas is an amazing, creative person. He lives and breathes this, this stuff. I mean, it's not like, you know, he does it as a pastime or just to make money as a business. He's always, always doing something with uh, film uh, whether it be writing scripts, whether it be actually doing uh, still photos or, or filming videos, movies, commercials, etc. And everything got done that we wanted to get done. There was no uh, you know, limit to, uh, well, we can't pull that off because we don't have the money to do it. You know, if you're willing to, to put in the effort with Thomas, he'll, he'll make it happen. And that's the next video we're getting ready to work on is probably going to surpass blood pact and I, I love his approach because with me it's just like we gel together and we have some similar ideas and we wanted to kind of add that that movie-esque feel to a video instead of just having your typical uh band on stage you know band front shots lead singer singing into the camera we want to do more like cinematic movie approach to it and this next one's going to be same way. I mean, we're going to do it movie style and have, I don't know, this one, I think we're upwards of 50 actors in, in this film. So Blood Pack reminds me of like Tales of Halloween. It came out a couple, about a year or so ago, maybe, maybe two years. It's got that, it's got that feel to it. You know, you've got that, you've got that story and it, it don't last long. It's, it's, it doesn't take forever to get into shit. I mean, it's like right into it. It, right. It's 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 like you're like you said, it's like you're watching a little mini horror flick and it's cool. Yeah, I mean I really love that aspect of it too. I mean and that's just how I am as a person and as an artist. I like I like delivering content to to my fans, to my audience, because again, who wants to pay money to see something that's not entertaining? That's I consider myself more of an artist entertainer than I do a musician. So it's very important to me to to convey that and give that to my fans. Is Thomas going to be working on the next video with you guys as well? Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, okay. very much so. Now, I know you mentioned Blood Pact, and I know you said this next song that's going to be coming out is probably going to be another one of your favorites, but are there any songs standing out more to you than any right now possible on this new album, if you can talk about it possibly? I mean, I know you just mentioned Blood Pact, but are there any more possibly? I don't know if I'm supposed to... Uh release this shit but uh, <laughs> that, uh, one of my other personal favorites on the record is a song called can't feel and it's uh it's it, it's hard to say uh because i i like them all on the record it's, it's like choosing which is your favorite kid but right I, I really i really am feeling it right now and, and i know that it must change every time you listen to it or go back and dabble through these again and, and i'm sure that happens a lot but yeah, I mean, and, and and the hard part about it is when, when I sit down and write, I don't try to come up with something out of thin air. I mean, the, all these songs are things that, uh, you know, have happened to me or involved me. They're very personal. I write about real life, and hopefully uh, people can relate to that. I think a lot of people do because I... I, I write simply so people can understand what I'm saying. Not a lot of, uh, you know, innuendos and 
I don't know how to say it, but uh, a lot of technical you know terms. I, I write very plainly for the average person here. Who's producing this Alan Raven, or are you actually doing it yourself? I have done all the uh, tracking up to this point. I basically demoed the whole album out, and then I threw it off to uh, our keyboardist, Roy Stegman. Uh, so he's actually going to be doing the uh, production as far as putting it together and mixing, and then mastering will be done by uh, Sarah Lee Lucas at Master Sound Studios in Orlando. He's actually the ex-drummer for Marilyn Manson. Right, and you've worked with him several times, is that correct? Uh, yeah, several times. He and I you know, he and I have been friends for many, many years. So, you know, anytime I have an album, I just throw it to him to do the mastering on. And they've worked with Nine Inch Nails, Celine Dion. I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong with them. Well, yeah, right. And, and plus, you know, you, you want to work with somebody that's a familiar face who knows exactly what you guys are looking for when they do that for your album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the mastering process isn't so much mixing, finding that sound. It's uh, maximizing and getting that sound to really cross over radio and outlets like that Mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to be, you know, be heard. In your own opinion, what do you hope everyone takes away from this new single blood pack or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just any of Sister Kill Cycle's music in general, Raven? I think each song has kind of its own message of, of things that uh, people are going to pick up on. Blood Pact, for example, is, you know, one of the lines is this is not, not just another love song. It, techni- it really is a love song. It's, uh, it, it's kind of a thing uh, between two people that, uh, you know, made a commitment to each other. And then through the pressures of the world, something happened and that commitment was broken. So, the idea it was like, you know, this is supposed to be forever. We made a blood pact. I don't know. I, I think just in general, the band, as far as any image or message to get out, is just that, you know, uh, there's entertainment out there. And if you want to do something in life, don't take no for an answer. Just make it happen. I mean, there's going to be trials and tribulations and barriers to cross, but just keep your face to it keep pushing forward and uh, make it happen. Sister Kill Cycle won Best Hard Rock Artist Award at the first annual Hard Music Awards in Tampa, Florida in 2006. Did this open yep. more doors for the band, or at what point did you start to take notice of more opportunities? Yeah, it was uh, it, it was really cool because it was, uh, it was like a, uh, a music awards like you would see on MTV. Um, it was all done up. I had limousines, a red carpet, you know, all the media was there. But what was really interesting and, and, and cool about it was the fact that we finally got on a level with a lot of our peers. Uh, they were there as well, some performing, some were just, uh, you know, in the audience. Uh, a lot of them were getting their own awards. I think it was, it, it was through that it, it also opened up visibility to a lot of these uh, music manufacturers and uh, radio stations and uh, other people in the industry that we were no longer just a local Tampa band. We were actually a force that was doing something out there and making noise. And, you know, we followed that up with some pretty extensive touring that year. I think we went out to, from here to L.A. twice that year. And like you just mentioned, you guys did a lot of touring during that time period with bands like Bile, Arch Enemy, Cradle of Filth, the I hope I pronounced this right, the uh, Crux Shadows, KMFDM, yeah. the Jenny Tortures, you have uh, Nocturne, Prong, oh my God, Prong, M- Mushroom Head, awesome man, Seven Dust, the Mighty Seven Dust. You can't get any better oh, yeah. than those guys. And, and I'm going to say this right now, they still do not get the respect that they should be. Those guys should be a major headlining act right there. So. Oh yeah, they're they're great, and Lejon is is such a sweet awesome human being yes. i mean he is the most humble just kind person thrill kill cult and cc deville poison that, that's that's pretty cool right there that's to me is and that's what i grew up on <laughs> is this yeah. is this what you want to see this band to achieve to achieve like to be a relentless touring band i i love touring i think that is probably my favorite aspect is being out there and not so much the traveling part of it because I've traveled so long and so many, so much that 
you know, uh, when it's time to take a vacation, I'm like, uh, I don't want to go on vacation. I just want to stay home. But I, I, every show I get to meet face to face and, and speak to my fans and meet new fans. And to me, that, that is the greatest thing. The greatest part of, of this industry is these people respect you and, and these people really get what you're doing and they appreciate you for doing what you're doing. So there's no greater, there's no greater gift than somebody looking at you and telling me your music is great. It helped me through blah, 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 you know? Uh, and I mean, it's just me ultimately. I'm, I'm still a guy sitting here and to have so many people respect me. I, it's uh, it's a blessing and I really appreciate it. Yeah, it shows you that music is really a voice for everybody. I mean, you may think that you're not creating stuff that people's going to adapt to, but you're crazy, man. You've got some good stuff out there, and I think that that's cool that music is a voice for everybody. It's a relief for everyone. Yeah, yeah it it always was for me growing up. Uh, I got into music at a very, very early age, probably around 10, 9, 11, somewhere around there, and... Uh, it, it became a world that I gra- gravitated towards. Uh, you know, my family life was kind of uh, difficult, to say the least, uh, you know. But uh, music was, uh, it, w- it was my escape. It, it you know, it, it gave me a place to go that wasn't home. And uh, I think around, I think around 13 years old, I discovered, I saw Alice Cooper. And uh, I knew from that moment on that that's what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Oh, man. And, you know, I know it wouldn't be no doctor or surgeon or race car driver. I wanted, to, I wanted to fucking do exactly what Alice does. And he has paved the way for so many bands like Ghost, like yourself, like Marilyn Manson, like Rob Zombie and all these guys like that. So that is awesome. He, he, is, he is the godfather, the innovator of all of this. And, uh, again, I got, I got the opportunity to meet him in Phoenix at, uh, he has uh, like a church there. It's like an outlet for, for teens to come in and they teach the music and there's a full stage there and, uh, classes and kids can just come in and get off the streets. It's free, which is really cool that he would do something like that in the Phoenix area. But, uh, we were playing a show. And I was at, we were there early, of course, during the day to load in. And I just went out to take a walk and I saw this church and, you know, had Alice's face plastered all over everything and a van wrapped all in Alice Cooper. So I walked up and, uh, lo and behold, I, uh, a little old lady opened the door and said, would you like to come in and take a tour? And I'm like, sure. So she brought me in. And we're discussing, I was like, this is so cool. Alice Cooper's like been like my one idol since I was a kid. And she's, she's like, well, would you like to meet him? I'm like, are you serious? And she's <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's here now. And, uh, so she, she took me over and he was just finishing up a meeting with some other people and, uh, got to meet Alice Cooper and talk to him probably 20, 30 minutes. And during the, during the time we're talking, his wife, his daughter, and their new uh, son-in-law and grandson showed up. So I pretty much met the whole Alice family right there at one shot. That's awesome. And uh, I was uh, I was dumbfounded. I was just like, you know, I so wanted to like get an autograph and all this, and uh, then I just kept saying, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be that crazy fan. You know, here I am at your church and blah blah blah. But uh, we, he ended up asking me if we, you know, wanted to take a picture together. So we 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 did, and that that was my only evidence of the meeting. That's awesome, man! Uh, to give back to the community from where he came from and things like that. He's not forgotten where he's come from. Oh no, That's... no, he is. He's another. He's one of those great individuals, and and uh, you'll see. I mean, in the music industry, it, it's it's a very tight knit community. I mean, all these guys know each other. Slash from Guns N' Roses. You know, Ozzy, Marilyn himself, you know, they, they're all like a tight knit community and a lot of them do give back. Some of them you don't see so much, but, uh, a lot of these guys are, are very humble down earth people. How much growth musically have you seen this band plus yourself go through up to working on this new album or has it just been more of a personal growth for each of you all involved in this Raven? 
probably a little of both, I, I would say. However, unfortunately, through the years and the albums, this band has gone through quite a few members. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm hard to work with and I demand certain things, or uh, I think people typically just don't have their shit together. They, they get into something like this, and uh, they, th- they think they're going to like do this as a hobby, and I do not run things this way. When they find out that this is a business, and this is you know every day of your life, I think it becomes too much for some people, and you know they all have their reasons, whatever. I'm not going to sit here and bash and knock people, but uh, I think I, from the early days, I certainly have grown as far as a songwriter. Things back in the days were more early, uh, leaning towards punk, goth music. I mean, it was very simple, just straight up rock and roll. And I think as a songwriter, I've personally grown. I mean, like I said, I I wrote these, these songs on this record. I pretty much write all the music there have been a couple through the years that I've had other songwriters write a few tunes, but uh, uh, I would I would like to think that I've grown like exponentially to this from the first record to this record. Do you do anything differently when you come into that recording studio during that writing and recording process to help keep your mind fresh and open to, to new stuff, to not let the music still get boring? Do you do anything to, to help yourself out, maybe to step away and recharge? Drink a lot. <laughs> You gotta you, you, you gotta mix your liquors. A Long Island iced tea all day long. <laughs> yeah, so I've, like I said, uh, I'm guilty of I've had people come up into my studio and they're looking at it and it looks like a trash hole because there's literally fifty bottles of empty bottles of wine and absinthe and you know I mean, no, I mean that drinking is an outlet. Uh, you know, it is it's a drug in itself and it helps you get into a different place in your mind. I wouldn't say, you know, turn into an alcoholic and, uh, you know, write everything drunk as hell. But, uh, sometimes when you have writer's block or, or something's not coming to you, it, it's, it, it's good to take a different perspective of things. I mean, we all know we've been out there and we've got drunk and we saw one thing one way. And then when we sobered up the next day, we're like, Oh, I'm a dumbass. That didn't happen. But yeah, I mean, I, and sometimes you just got to step away from it. You know, I will, uh, I will go outside and, uh, you know, I have quite a, quite a few guns that I, I build and collect from AR-15s to Glocks and handguns and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll go shooting. Just recently, I've taken up painting. I've never painted in my life. I always drew as a kid, but never actually painted. And, uh, just recently started painting and I enjoy it. I've actually sold a few pieces, which really surprised me as soon as I painted them, posted them, people were wanting to buy them. So that's interesting. What can fans expect at a show from sister kill cycle who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? As a fan, uh, you can expect to see a lot of rock and roll gritty in your face. One-on-one. I, I like to, I like to really connect with my fans. Uh, I, I don't stay up on the stage far back and, and just let them look at me. I like to get down. I like to touch people, not in the wrong ways, <laughs> in the good ways. But hey, I like to interact with them. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of like the horror stuff. We, we do fog, so it looks, you know, kind of gives that creepy look. We use a lot of like program lighting, so uh, our stage show is on par with like anybody on a B level band. Obviously we're not, you know, kiss yet, but uh, we'll get there. What about social media? Do you like this, that we have social media now to reach out to, to more people that, that can hear of sister kill cycles music. Do you like this now? It's uh, unfortunately it has become a necessity. I personally think that this social media that we have now has instead of bringing us together as it was supposed to do, I think it has separated us even more than before. Yes. Um, Everything is a make-believe world. You can be whoever you want. And I just think there's no authenticity for human contact, you know, in this day and age. And I think it's really hurting us as a people. Don't like to get into politics too much, but 
you know, you'd have to be blind not to see what's going on in this country right now. And we're so divided as people that uh, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know if there is a way back from this now. Uh, we'd have to probably go in the dark ages. But, uh, you know, again, to answer your question, it is a necessity to uh, promote and advertise because so many people use it. Um, the typical ways that record labels and the industry used to promote, people just aren't doing anymore. I mean, when's the last time? Do you even know where a local record store is in your town? Actually, as far as records, yeah, we've we've got one, actually, and it's still here. The vinyls and stuff like that, but it is still here for now. That That's awesome because, I mean, here in the Tampa area, I mean, it, there's a few hit or miss, but, I mean, we're talking... 80s records are still in here. This is more like a collector's place than it would be like a, you know, FYE went out of business. Yep. You know, and I, I think, I think that's what's really changed about the industry is is there's you know a, it went from albums and CDs to online downloads. Now you buy an album through iTunes and it goes to your devices. You listen to it and that's it. Me, I like. Uh, I like opening that CD and smelling that printing and, and reading through like all the credits and the lyrics and seeing the artwork. And I was actually just talking to uh, Taki from uh, Eve to Adam last night. We played a show together and we we both agree that it's going to come back around again. People are going to get tired of this electronic world that we live in and not having anything of substance. And I work in tech support. I, I see this shit every day. I see how it has ruined people who don't want to talk to their family because of, oh, if I want to talk to my family, they're in a different room and they just text somebody. That's horse shit. Th this, yeah. it, it has ruined people. And, and I know I do podcasts. I know this is part of it. But I, I would gladly go back to the way things used to be back in the 80s. Of, like you said, buying that album, smelling of the, the just smelling of it when you first opened it, man, that, that takes me back to when I bought my first Poison cassette tape. I mean, I remember yeah. that because of that, you know? I was like, oh, this is cool. And um, yeah. my technical support job is absolutely fucking horrible. So the shit I see and hear is like, it, it's, it's unbelievable. When, when parents especially won't just have their kids have iPads and things like that in their hands to, to not have to deal with their kids, then don't be doing what you're doing to create the child. That's ridiculous. So. I, I, unfortunately, that that's that's the truth. I mean, not everybody's like that, but uh, generally, the internet has become our children's babysitters. They've become our children's teachers. That's true. Most families, uh, if they're lucky to have a you know family, you know, mom and a dad, or mom and a mom and dad, dad, whatever, they both have to work. I mean, to to survive in today's world, uh, you. There's no dad going to work and mom sits at home with the kids. I mean, the kids are alone. And what's raising our children? Social media, the news, uh, all this stuff. That's that's what's raising our children and teaching them. And schools aren't schools anymore. You can't teach kids things in schools anymore because, you know, it's it's not politically correct. Very true. You can't say nothing now. You have to, or you'll hurt somebody's feelings. And then you have to have a feelings timeout and... Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. it's ridiculous. It is. What does Sister Kill Cycle bring to the table for music that's that's not out there as of right now, if possible? I know everybody's not reinventing the wheel, but what do you guys bring possibly? I think a, a sense of danger hmm. back to rock and roll. I think that's one of the things that that you uniquely defines rock and roll from the other genres of music, whether it be country or bluegrass or you know, classical, anything like that. Rock and roll has always had that sense of danger, that sense of rebellion. And let's face it, you listen to FM radio and everybody out there sounds exactly the same. Very and true. they all take the safe road. They're writing songs about partying. They're writing songs about this. But these guys are not partying backstage. They're wearing their white hotel robes in their hotels after the show. And uh, I think what we bring is, it is a, re a realism. We live this rock and roll life. I mean, we all, you know, we're, we're all parents. We're all, you know, grown ass people now. But, uh, you know, what you see from this band is how I live my life. Raven, is there a country that stands out or even shocks you that Sister Kill Cycle gets support from or your music gets played in that area? Actually, believe it or not, I, I was shocked when, when I started looking uh, at all the plays over the world 
that uh, Indonesia oh, wow. has, you know, more than a, a, a few people. I mean, there's a couple couple hundred plays in Indonesia, and I'm like, wow, uh, we haven't even we haven't played there, promoted there, or anything. So for that many people, or maybe it's you know maybe it's a couple people playing it a bunch. I don't know, but <laughs> I, I just thought that was that was kind of unique. Indonesia and you know some of the uh, some of the Arab nations over there. We've played there. Yeah, you know, had some plays there. So um, it's 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 just good to see. And, but like you said, is it's kind of shocking. I never thought you know we got people in Indonesia listening to us. When can we expect "Cross My Heart" out? When when does this album drop? Pre-sales go on Valentine's Day. The record label is going to do like 24 hours of pre-sale, um, so everybody can make sure to get. Uh, get it before anyone else, and then the album will officially drop on the 15th. How can folks stay in touch with you guys, find out what you're up to? I know you just mentioned how to get the album, but some more merchandise, things like that. How can they do that, Raven? Uh, of course, Facebook, you know, just Sister Kill Cycle on Facebook. We have the main page on there, which is ironic. Uh, we we kind of steered away from the uh, typical uh, website, you know, SisterKillCycle.com. We had one for a while, but I just noticed that so many more people are trafficking through Facebook that uh, that's that's the prime uh, presence for the band is on there. Of course, there's Reverb Nation, there's YouTube, there's Twitter, Instagram. I mean, the, the band has a page on pretty much all social media outlets. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for my show? Of course. All right. This is Raven Chain from Sister Kill Cycle, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please go check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link plus our YouTube link, and we will soon have a Twitch link where you can check us out all the time. Live, well, not all the time, but live. And also get out and check out Sister Kill Cycle. Get out and check out Blood Pact. And I'm telling you right now, you I, I think you guys are going to dig this. I definitely do. So get out and check out Sister Kill Cycle. So, Raven, best of luck, man, and keep kicking ass out there for us. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man.